Hello folks. Well, I have had a pretty good run of collecting data with my telescopes, but the bad weather is on the way and I've got to put my scopes away at least for a week until the good weather hopefully comes back again. Okay, these are all of the projects I could have chosen to process. I have the Heart Nebula, um, a lot 15, which is the core of the Heart Nebula, a star cluster. I have the Wizard Nebula here, the Soul Nebula, Pac-Man, and Deerlick. And Deerlick did not come out very good. It, the, the, the galaxy was just too small to, to really pick off data from, and it was about eight hours of data. I didn't like how, and you know what? Delete. Goodbye, Deerlick, forever. Just wasn't looking good on the Rasa. So what I did choose to process was the Soul Nebula, and let me show you what I did. And here is the Soul Nebula that I captured with my Explorer Scientific Telescope and ASI 1600 mono camera. And it's in the Hubble palette, and I love it. I could not have expected it to come out looking better. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with it, and uh, I may be biased because I did it, but I'm definitely going to submit this one for APOD. And let me show you, if you're interested, to, I'll show you the steps that I went through to create it. Okay, so let me show you the, the filters I used. This is HA, and I put this in the green channel 100%. This is oxygen that I put in the blue channel 100%. And this is sulfur that I put in the red channel 100%. And all of this data is after I ran a dynamic background extraction and histogram on them. And what I did, oh, and, and, and I also put HA in the luminance channel, and then I combined all my data, and um, after they were nonlinear from the histogram, and this is what the combine looked like. And when I saw this combine, I was thinking, hey, that looks pretty dang good. Why do I have to modify this at all? <laughs> of course, I came to my senses. Oh, I think I can make it look better than that, but let's just have a, a fun look here at... Um, this is the original combined data, and this is what it looks like after I processed it. So I'm definitely glad I, I went through the, the steps I normally go through to get to the final product. Um, I don't think this one on the left is going to get me a, a NASA APOD. I don't know if the one on the right will get me a NASA APOD. You can always cross your fingers, though. Okay, so after my combine, the first thing I did was run Starnet to create a starless image because I think the, the picture is easier to work with when it's starless. And that's what the starless picture looked like. And there's my stars, unmodified still. Um, I, I saved them off for later. And once I had um, the starless image, I, the next thing I did was um, sharpen the image. And I use Unsharp Mask and the default settings on Deconvolution, and I just drop that on there. It, deconvolution seems to do a pretty good job sharpening, even though it's, I don't know if it's really meant for that. I mean, there's, I used to use it in a, a different way a long time ago. And then I ran some, some denoise on it with a, a multi-scale linear transform, one of these. I use that with slightly modified settings just to do... See, what I do is, um, first I highlight the stronger areas with a mask to sharpen it. And then I invert the mask on the weaker areas and denoise that. I don't try to denoise the areas I sharpen because then that kind of defeats the point of sharpening. And then I ran a, a local histogram only on the stronger areas. It didn't make that big of a difference. I, I did a local histogram, very, very soft settings. And uh, you'd really have to look closely to see the, the difference. Really didn't do much at all. Because I, I, I didn't go crazy. Some people go crazy with it. And it, I mean, it really destroys their image. And then I ran the dark structure script. Um, that's I just used the default settings on that under utilities, dark structures. And it made a little difference. It makes the, the darker areas a little more dark. And then I, I ran um, Photoshop to um, make the, the yellow areas a little more goldish looking. I, I find it easier to work with colors in Photoshop. And you can see 
from my previous image, you can see how the, the yellow areas in this area are a little bit more gold looking now. Okay, and what I did in this picture is I wanted to strengthen the, the oxygen, the bluer areas in this. And so what I did is I took, um, I took my oxygen data and I created a starless mask with it using Starnet again. And I created this. It doesn't look great, but it was enough. So I made this starless, came up with that, used it as a mask so I could then make these areas for, of oxygen a little more blue and you can see what I did there. So that's what I did for that. Now I've got the, a little more blue where it should be for oxygen. And what did I do here? Um, I added more contrast. You, you can see what's going on there from here to here, more contrast. I might have even made this area a little more bright. I shrunk my stars. I went back to my stars because I'm getting ready to put them back. And here's how they look before. Um, these are the original stars. And they were very magenta. And you know how to get rid of magenta. I showed you that before. Really easy. You just take your image, invert it, and all the magenta. I don't like magenta stars. Now you can see the magenta has turned green. And now you can just drop the SCNR on it, get rid of that magenta. And then you can... Um, invert it back and now you've got your you've gotten rid of the magenta I, nobody likes magenta stars <laughs> and this is what it looks like when I put the stars back looking pretty good and the stars are nice and pinpoint and round and let's see uh, oh and I didn't like the background though you can see the background is very uh, sort of uneven kind of magenta I ran another DBE on it so I did another dynamic background extraction and I think it, it cleaned up the background for me without really affecting the nebula itself. So that came out pretty good. And let's put this over here. And then I did one more thing. I did, uh, can you see that I, I extracted the luminance and added it back with a little more color. And to me, it really gave the picture a nice glow. Doesn't it, the one on the left seem a little flat? compared to the glow that the, the one on the right shows. I, I think that definitely the one on the right has has that glow about it. And a lot of people ask, well, how do you do that? And let me show you what I did here. I don't know if I can replicate it. I hope I can. I'm going to extract the luminance. And I may be doing this all wrong. So here's the, I extracted the luminance. Now I'm going to go into my LRGB combination, uncheck the RGB, and for luminance, um, I'm going to select the L that it was just created. And let's get this out of the way. And let's, let's see if this works. I hope I can replicate it. Uh, let's give it a little more color, maybe a little more lightness. Decreasing actually in increases it. Weird. Um, and let's, let's see if that works. This is what I did, but if I might not be using the exact same thing, you always got to play around with it and tweak it. Do you see that? Do you see the, the glow it has now? It's not just increased saturation. It looks like it, it just gave the picture a glow. Maybe I'm imagining it, but... <laughs> and, um, and this one, I just uh, increased the blacks a little bit to give it more contrast. I did that in Photoshop. You can actually go into selective color and select black and increase it. And that's my final picture. What do you think? You, you can give it to me. You can tell me what you don't like. I don't mind. I'm happy with it. But if you have a different opinion, let me know. I'm curious. And that's all I got, folks. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. <laughs>